Yeah, I'm recording now. I'm sorry about that. I forgot to record initially. Okay, so uh, just to summarize what we have done so far, we went to this site, okay, where a monthly amortization schedule is prepared. So we're, for our example, we're going to loan 5 million, but this will not be loaned to you because uh, you will have to have your a down payment for your equity, uh, let's say 20%. So your loanable amount will only be 4 million. Let's assume that you're going to uh, you're adopt, you're going to follow a 15-year uh, loan. Uh, given the, uh, I showed you that Pag-ibig follows certain rates. Okay, what are the rates here? What are the rates? For a 15-year loan, the interest rate is 8%. So that's what we're filling up here, 8%. And then let's assume that the first payment is on December. A November 2022 and so by month calculate so we have this amortization schedule this is the monthly amortization 38226 okay all in all if you add up all the payments it will be 6,8806.95 and then the expiry will be after 15 years that's November 2037 and you have here the schedule of the payments Okay, and the payment going to the principal, payment going to the interest, and the balance, principal balance, until you reach 15 years, November 2037. By that time, your principal balance becomes already zero. Okay, so we copy these details, this monthly amortization, and the total principal payment. Of course, the total principal payment should be 4 million and the total interest payment 2880. So we copy that in our model, okay, this one, the monthly amortization is 38226. Okay, I'll now give you a minute to compute for the monthly amortization. It should be the same as 38226. Once you're done, kindly copy your code in the chat box, okay, and uh, just chat it with me first okay, so that the others will not will not see it so i'll pause recording kindly remind me class to put in a record while you're doing it i'll pause recording recording okay so let's let's now compute for the monthly amortization we're using the pmt function okay the rate that we're using is eight percent this is annual Okay, however, the amortization is monthly. So we will have to adjust, adjust the interest rate to monthly. And to adjust to monthly interest rate, we have to divide it by the number of periods per year, which is 12. Okay. Also, the number of periods will also change. Instead of 15 years, it will be 15 multiplied by 12. Right? So there will be now be uh, uh, 180. 180 months, okay? And then comma, our present value is the amount that we're going to loan is 4 million, okay? There's no future value. And the type of annuity is the end of the period or ordinary annuity. Or you can just uh, uh, skip uh, putting this in. Because anyway, Excel will also read that as zero. And also this one. Okay, but anyway, I just place it there. And since these are cash flows and the present value is positive, then I'm expected to get a negative monthly amortization. So just to make it positive, I'm going to put negative there. Okay, remember you can put a negative if it's PV or FV or PMT, if they are cash flows, but not for N per or rate. Control enter, and we get 38226.0. Okay, I think most of you got it. So, very good. So, it's 38226.0. So, now you know, class, you can, whatever type of uh, amortization, you can easily compute for the amortization, whether it's monthly, weekly, if it's weekly, or semi annually, etc. And that's very easy to do in Excel. Okay.
So we can now prepare our amortization schedule. All right, so <clears throat> uh, let's start with at the beginning of the month. So let's start with month zero. And then we type month one, two, three, until month 180. So what's the best way to, to uh, generate this series? Okay, you can highlight zero, one, two, three, and then go down until you reach 180. Okay, because there will be 180 months. 180 there. Okay, but that's not the, if the uh, number, if the series is short, it means it's not a long number, then that's okay. You can just uh, establish the pattern and then copy down. But if it's a long series, for example, you're, you're doing 1 million or even 100,000, if you just drag it, that, that will be very inefficient. Okay, so let's let's uh, see how else we can. So let me delete that. How else can we generate a series of uh, numbers from zero up to one hundred eighty with increments of one? Any any suggestion, guys? Aside from the one that I did a while ago, where I type one and then two and then three, I first establish a pattern and then copy copy this down up to one. Okay, so that's possible. Any other way? Okay, some of you might suggest is equal to zero previous plus one. You can also do that. Okay, and then copy down. That will also give, give you the same series. But that's inefficient if you have a very tall series, a very long series. For example, if you're doing up to one million. Imagine, imagine dragging the, the formula. It's just 1,150, and I find it already to be tiresome. Okay, so what's another way to, to generate a series? Yes, name box. Okay, how do you make sin? Would you kindly uh, share? How do I use main box in order to generate series? In, you use name box to give a name to cell. Okay, if I want to give, uh, for example, we can we can lay, we can give these names. Okay, we can give the name loan principal to five million, etc. But to generate a series of numbers, fill tool. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, how do you do that, Gerard? Field tool. You can unmute yourself, please. Uh, you select the series and then, uh, yeah, you put a stop value down. And then the stop value is the increment. Okay, would you like to think? Uh, have, you have you tried that before? Or you just got it from the net now? Uh, no, so I remember you on uh, this before. I, I already remember. discussed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think I already discussed it uh, in class. Okay, so let's just review that. So let's start with the number zero. Yeah, I think I did that, did that already. And then let's go to, okay, let's go to, uh, use the home tab. And then in the home tab, you have editing here. And then if you recall, you have this field, right? Fill, okay, and then series. Okay, and we want the series to be in columns. We want it to be going down, not going to the right. And then the step value is one, which means this is the increment. So it will increase, you start with zero and then increment it by one. And then the stop value is one eight. Okay. And uh, you can actually use also the fill for doing dates, for a growth rate, etc. 
All right, so let's uh, click OK. And then we get now the automatic fill up to 180. So imagine uh, generating a list uh, of 1 million, zero up to 1 million. Then if we did what I previously demonstrated to you, uh, you'll maybe you'll, you'll be older by the time you finish. But with this one, it's just a okay, fill and then series, okay? Uh, chat, please, guys, if you got this. Any questions about that? <clears throat> Thank you. The rest, please, kindly chat. Okay, these are very good <clears throat> tips, Excel tips that you can use. All right. Thank you so much for your feedback. Okay, now we go to, okay, let's now go to filling this now. <laughs> okay, at the end of when you borrowed, okay, at the end of the first month, okay, so let's, let's do this. Why don't we give this uh, uh, names, okay? So let's highlight this. And then control, uh, control shift F3, so control, okay, oops. Come on, control shift F3. Okay, let's create names from the selection and let's use the left column. Okay, so this, this now have names. Okay, you have loan principal, this one, down payment. It will not, it will not include the percentage. Amount of finance, annual rate, number of years. Okay, here, periods here. And then monthly amortization. Okay. All right. So at the end of month one, you will not pay yet. You will not pay 38226.08. So no amount for interest, no amount for principal. And the ending at the end of month, first month, the month and principal will still be 4 million. Okay. It will still be 4 million. Okay. At the uh, after the uh, beginning of the month, okay, and at the at the end of month one, you'll now begin to pay. You're going to pay thirty eight two 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 six point zero eight. Now the question is, how much of this will go to the principal? How much of this thirty eight two two six will go to the interest, and how much will go to the principal? Okay, so the total amount that you're going to pay, the 38226.08, not all will go to the principal. Okay, now this is very important because the amount that will, uh, every time you, you, uh, you uh, diminish the principal, okay, what happens is that okay, your interest rate becomes less. Okay, so our question here is, how much will go to the principal? The payment of 38226.08. Take note that every month you're going to pay 38226.08. Next month, again, 38226.08. Next month, again, 38226.08. That's why this is an annuity. Okay, you keep on paying 38226.08, which is what the PMT function is all about, right? PMT, that's your payment, that's your annuity. This, in this case, it's, an, it's a monthly annuity. Okay, so let's compute for the interest first. How do we compute for the interest? The interest will always be based on the month and principal. So in month one, how much was the principal? 
month and principal. The month and principal was four million, right? So we will base our interest on the month and principal multiplied by that by the okay, uh, multiplied by that by the annual interest divided by the periods per year. Annual rate of interest divided by the periods per year. Why are we dividing? Why are we dividing? Because we're going to compute the interest based on the monthly interest based on a monthly rate. Okay. Our period, our period in consideration is monthly. Therefore, our interest should be our effective rate should be also monthly. So that's eight percent divided by twelve. All right. Enter. So of the total amount that we're going to pay, 38,226, 26,666 will be going to interest. And the principal amount will be, how much will be the principal? How much will go to the principal? Anyone, please? Okay, so before we, we answer that, let me repeat this. Okay, in case some of you did not <clears throat> get it. Okay, the interest will always be based on what was the prior period's ending balance of the principal. Okay, since we have been paid, we did not pay the previous period, the ending principal of that <clears throat> of the previous period was still four thousand four million. Okay, so this four million we're <clears throat> we're going to uh, subject it to an interest rate of eight percent. But this is annual, so you will have to divide it by the periods per year to convert it into a monthly interest. Okay, so I press Control Enter. So you have interest of twenty six 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 seven. Now for the principal amount, how much will it? Okay, uh, make sense. Kindly share your answer to everyone, please. <clears throat> make sense. Kindly share your answer to everyone. The answer that you shared with me. <clears throat> okay, so that's correct. Thank you, Maxine. Therefore, the principal amount to be paid at this specific time at month one will be equal to, as Maxine suggested, the principal payments, the the uh, the uh, monthly payment minus what we paid as interest. There, <clears throat> monthly amortization minus interest. So not everything, the 38226, not everything will be deducted to, will go to the principal payment. As, as shown, 26,000 will go to interest payments. So for the first month, the interest, interest payment was even higher than the principal payment. Okay, and that's usually the case because of a high ending principal. Okay, so what will be now the new month and principal? So 4 million minus whatever was deducted from the principal there. Okay, so your new month and principal will now be, <clears throat> it will now be uh, 399988840.23. Okay. <clears throat> Let me pause for a while. Any questions? If no questions, kindly chat yes, please. Uh, kindly chat yes to indicate that you were able to follow and that you understood so far. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So thank you. Yeah, I think uh, you got it. Okay. So that will be the first month. So what will be now the interest for the second month? <clears throat> the interest for the second month will be equal to what? <clears throat> it will be equal to whatever the uh, month and principal of the previous period 
multiplied by the 8% interest and then divided by 12. Okay, so this would be equal to this one, the previous month and principal multiplied by the in annual interest divided by the number of periods per year. <clears throat> okay, all right, so what do we get? It's 26,589. So you notice the interest rate went down and the interest went down. Why? Because the principal went down. So as the principal keeps on going down, the interest goes down also. And what happens to the principal? The principal goes up, Okay, which is good because uh, the more you subtract from the month and principal, the lower will be your interest, right? Because the interest will always be based here. That's why if you take a look at the plot here, okay, let's, uh, let me again show this. Okay, take a look at this plot. <clears throat> okay, the yellow here <clears throat> are your interest payments. This one. Okay, so for 2022, so this was the first interest payment. Okay, and notice over time, okay, what, what was done here was to summarize. So it summarized for the whole year. So they it added the interest rates for the whole of 2022. For 2022, this, this amount only because you have November and December. And then 2023, January, uh, 2023, 2024, 2025, et cetera, until 2027. And you notice that the interest rates, the interest payments go lower and lower and lower and lower. And then while well, the principal payments, which is this one, go higher, 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 okay? And if we compare 11.559 and 26.667 and 3998.41, if I copy this, Control C. If I copy the amortization table provided for us, this one, 26667. Okay, this is 11559. Uh, this was scared. This is scared to the uh, nearest peso. All right, so it's the same. Okay, so how about the principal? What will be the principal now? Uh, just like in the previous formula, the principal will now be, the principal payment will now be whatever your monthly amortization is minus your interest payments. <clears throat> okay, control enter. 11636.48. You notice that your principal payment went up just like here. 11636. So the same. Okay, and then what will be our month and principal? is equal to the previous minus the principal, the principal payment. <clears throat> okay, so what can, what do you notice about these formulas with these formulas? This is the previous minus the monthly interest. This is also the previous minus the monthly interest. For the principal, the formula is the monthly amortization minus the interest payment for that month. And this one, also the monthly amortization minus the interest payment for that one. So they're the same, right? So they're the same. So we do, we do not need to write the formula again. We can just highlight this, highlight that, and then copy down, click down, there. <clears throat> okay. Okay, pause for a while, class, and then please kindly chat. <laughs> if uh, just be lying here. If you were able to, if you have questions, please ask them now. Or if you were able to get this, so that the ending will be this one. 
once again, class, kindly chat, please. If, uh, okay, Tayo, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, good. Okay, so that's good. I think everyone got it. Okay, so let's add the interest. So I put here total. <clears throat> I'm going to add this uh, alt equal to. That's a shortcut. Let's check. Okay, alt equal to. Control enter. <clears throat> okay, and then copy to the right. <clears throat> okay, so let's compare this with the one that we copied here. <clears throat> Let's see. Oops. Okay, same. <clears throat> Did you get the same class? Know the drill, guys. Were you able to get the same? Yes. Thank you. How about the rest? You should get total for the principal. It should be four million. Okay, exactly four million. It should be because you because that's what you loan. So that's what you're going to pay. Uh, but there's interest. So the interest is two eight eight zero. So it's uh, it's almost seventy five percent of your. <clears throat> of your interest, of your monthly amortization, of your, sorry, of your, uh, your principal, four million. Okay, all right, so, so far, we're okay. We were able to get, get this, okay. And <clears throat> we'd like to make a dynamic model such that uh, if I, if we change this, for example, Okay, if we change this, if we made this to, uh, let's say, the maximum is 6 million, right? If we made this 6 million, okay, so the monthly amortization will be 45, 45,870, and the principal is uh, 4.8 million. The interest is three, four, five, six. And notice at the end of 180 months, the principal should be zero. Okay, this should be zero already. It should not be, uh, there should not be any month and balance by that time. Okay, however, uh, the disadvantage of this type of model is that if I change this, for example, I made, I make this into 10 years, sorry. I make this into 10 years. What will happen? Okay, 10 years. So our model will not follow, right? Uh, we should end at 120. Okay, we should be ending at 120 because the uh, principal balance here is already 120. I made it into 10 years. So 10 times, uh, 10 times 12, that's 120. So this is now <clears throat> extraneous, okay? This is now unnecessary. This is not relevant because it's 10 years. 
So uh, it would be good to make a model such that if you change the number of periods, you all, you're also changing this model. Because this one, we actually manualize this. Okay, But you can create a model so that if it's only 120 periods, then automatically it will only end. It will end up to 120. Okay, it will end up to 120. All right, but <clears throat> let's defer that. Okay, so let me go back to our regional model. Another one, five million. Okay, let's compare this now with the with what what we have here in the graph. In the graph, <clears throat> it's now it's plotting the total interest and total monthly payment on a yearly basis. This is 2022, 2023, 2024, up to 2027. Okay, so we want to create now a table of payments for interest and for principal uh, per year, per year. Okay, so, all right, so let's uh, put the year here, year 2022. 2023, and let's use the field. Okay, field series. <clears throat> so increment of one uh, in columns, increment of one, and stock value is 20, 37. Okay. All right. Okay, see, so we would want to add interest principal. Okay. <clears throat> so we want to add the interest for 2022, also for 2023. Okay, but we cannot find it here because this is just a month. Right? So we will have to uh, add some fields here. Okay, let's put here. Okay, let me. Let's copy this to the. Let's move this to the. <clears throat> okay, I think we better. <clears throat> so let's just add two columns here, insert. Okay, what do we need, guys? We need to uh, generate <clears throat> uh, the month here. Let's call this index. Let's say some, change the name. And then here we have the month. So we're starting with the, uh, okay, let's, here we're starting with, okay, December. So which means this is a transaction to be done in November. So the first payment will be December. Okay, so this is November. The loan was conducted in November and then December. Okay, and let's see, let's see if we can uh, create a field uh, I don't think we can create a field using November and December. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's experiment. Starting with November, maybe Excel will not recognize this. Okay, uh, let me November. But the problem here is that, <clears throat> okay, no, I don't think we can use this to take a look at our series here and then we use at the date, month, we will still be asked for the stop value. <clears throat> okay, let's see. If I type 180, okay, let's see if it will fill this up. No, it does not. Okay. It does not. So we will be the one to <clears throat> fill this up, class. Okay, we need this because we would want to compute for the interest and the principal per year. 
And we would like to, your assignment will be to replicate this guys. I'm showing you now uh, the steps on how to do it, but you'll be the one to be submitted. You'll be the one to present this plot. Okay, I'm going to create a folder, assignment folder. <clears throat> and the assignment is to generate this. So we have your table here, the date, this one, the principal, the interest, and the balance. <clears throat> okay, the balance is this one. <clears throat> That's the principal balance. Okay, so your assignment class will be uh, to submit a plot like this, okay, which uh, you'll be submitting <coughs> on Canvas, of course, due on uh, Tuesday. So, but I'm teaching already uh, the initial steps on how to do it, because we need to we need to add the interest and the principal. So, how do we do that? Because here are it's just an index. We don't know what year this is, okay? Okay, but we know this is year. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's continue with this first. January, February. Okay, uh, maybe we can create this pattern. This one. Yeah, we can create this pattern. December. Up to December, and then we can copy this. Control C, Control D, right? And then copy this again. Control C, Control D. Another one. Okay, until, until such time, we can actually add. Okay, let's add more. Make, making it now three, control C, control V. <clears throat> this one class we have to do it manually. We cannot use the field function of, okay. Oops. Yes, it will only, <clears throat> it will end up to November. Okay, because we started with November. <clears throat> And then this is, we have to name this 2022, 2022. So this is your year. And this is 2023, 2023. Okay, I cannot drag it. Ah, I can, 2023. So let me just manually. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any <clears throat> tool to replicate this. So we can just do this manually. 2024, then 2025. I just type the first number and then copy it up to December. And then 2026. So sorry, we don't have. <clears throat> but you can do this uh, <clears throat> with. <clears throat> coding in Excel, but we don't, don't want to do that anymore. 2027. <clears throat> this will take some few more minutes, 2028, because it's up to <clears throat> 2037, 2029. A bit of patience here. <clears throat> But this will help later in adding the interest and the principles, 2030. <laughs> it's easier to do it this way because you have now references. You now know if this is uh, what year a particular interest or principal payment is. 
And then we have 2033, <clears throat> 2034. <clears throat> I'm not sure if we can. Now let's experiment. If I use this as a pattern, twenty thirty two up to twenty thirty four. I don't know if this will copy. No, it did not. Okay, it did not pick up the pattern. 2035, so we'll just have to manually do this up to December and 2036 up to December and then 2037. <clears throat> okay, there. All right, I'll give you a few minutes, class, to work on that. Your balance. Okay, when you're done with the <clears throat> year and <laughs> Month and your candy chat, please. Can we chat, please, if you're done? <clears throat> okay, good. Okay, now that you're done. Okay, <clears throat> so let me check. Let me see if uh, you can fill this uh, table up. So we would like to add all the interest, <clears throat> all the interest payment for 2022, for 2023, and the balance. Now, I just want to have one formula here, one formula here, and one formula here. <clears throat> and then 
we copy the formula down, okay, so that we are able to compute for the interest for the principal and the balance on a yearly basis. Okay, just give me one formula for each of these cells, and then we'll highlight everything here and then double click it so that it will copy down. <clears throat> All right, so the class, five minutes.
So you should be getting this, <coughs> guys. <coughs> I did this just now. Okay, so you have a basis for comparison. So for 2022, uh, the total interest was just, okay, so long, no? 2022, 26, and 11,559.42. 11.559.42. <clears throat> and then you add for 2023, but I want, there should only be one formula. It should be here, here, and also here, and also here. Okay, and then you can just copy it down. And check 2037, the balance at the end of 2037 was already zero. I'll show the whole <clears throat> table. You may want wish to take a picture so that you have. Uh, okay. You may wish to take a picture of that so that <clears throat> you have a <clears throat> a reference. Uh, the long way to do it, class, is just to add. For 2023, you add this, right? It's equal to sum, but that's a, a very inefficient way to do it. So 2024, and also for the principal. So that's actually not a good way to do it. <clears throat> you can, can do it by just inserting one cell here, one cell here. And for the balance, mm, these are the, uh, total principal payments per year. So how do you compute for the balance at the end of each year? <clears throat> All right, so Okay, so together with the assignment, <clears throat> so this will be your assignment, right? And so you have to know how to compute for this. How do you compute for the interest, for the principal, and for the uh, balance? For the interest, you just added the interest for 2022, and then uh, add the interest for 2023, for 2024, et cetera. In fact, the truth is I just use one formula here and then copied it to principal. For the balance, it requires another formula. Okay, for example, how did you get this? The balance is the 4 million minus the principal. But for the following year, this one, 3843, is not the uh, the amount the four million minus this. It should be the loan amount four million minus this two. Okay, we have to include this already because this is already the total uh, the uh, balance as of the end of December of 2023, and it it should have already been reduced by 2022 and 2023. So those are clues for you. Okay. One clue that I'll give you guys is that here, so kindly uh, research on this. You can use the formula sum ifs. Okay, it's very easy to do this. So learn about this sum ifs. So one formula for sum ifs here, and then copy it to the right here. And then, as I said, to get the balance, it's 4 million minus this one. And then, how do I? It should be. Uh, 
it should be uh, how do I make it uh, such that I can copy it down? It should be uh, 4 million minus this one. And the next one should be 4 million minus this one and this one. So you should have, you should be adding <clears throat> these principal balances. Okay, so those are clues number one. <clears throat> Use one formula. Some ifs for interest and then <clears throat> copy <clears throat> to principal. Okay, since this is an assignment, I'll not I'll not show you uh, <clears throat> how to do it. Uh, you have to also research no? and then formula for for balance. It should be <clears throat> for balance class, it should be this, right? The amount of finance. Amount to finance less sum of principal. When I say sum of principal, So for example, you're here, okay? You're here in this cell. <clears throat> so your balance will be 4 million minus this one. But when I copy this, <clears throat> it should be 4 million minus the sum of this. So it should include the sum of the principles. If I'm in 2024, it should be the, uh, uh, the principal 4 million minus the sum of 2022, 2023 and 2024. So just one cell, one formula here. And then when you copy it down, okay. So uh, again, one cell here, copy it to principal. One formula here, copy it to principal. One formula in balance and then highlight everything and then copy down. <clears throat> and then with that, you can now create this. You plot this. So the plot, column plot for the principal and the interest and line plot for your balance. Okay, you can do that in Excel. <clears throat> and of course you can put the dates here. Uh, no, no, not uh, ju just use the years, <clears throat> not the months. Okay, I'm sorry, it's uh, already past time. <clears throat> All right, any questions guys? <clears throat> the, the assignment is due to be submitted in Canvas. It's due on uh, uh, 9, uh, sorry, <clears throat> what's your time? 9.15, okay? Before the start of classes, you should have, uh, uh, I'll make an announcement. You should be able to, uh, you should be able to submit it already in Canvas. Excel file. So what you're going to submit is the table with the plot, okay? So let me stop recording.